Greetings gamers, I'm Anto and I want to start off by wishing you a happy Amet Festival or would that be a joyous lover's day? I know that I'm not going to be wishing you a happy day of dreams because like me I'm sure that you will be locked in your house resting the day away in praise of the goddess Onira. That's right, today we're talking about holidays and celebrations in your RPGs and I'm going to be giving you some tips on how to create them and how to make them stand out. First off, why bother using holidays or celebrations? Surely your players don't care whether today is the festival of lights. Well, the main reason is because holidays and celebrations and everything like that adds another layer to your game to make it feel like a real living world. It gives another example of things that the NPCs would be doing even if the players weren't present, which is always a really good way to help immerse your players, showing them that the NPCs would be doing something even if the players weren't there. And the next reason that you might want to include holidays or celebrations is because it's a really good way to have your players engage with the world and do something that isn't delving dungeons and fighting monsters. For example, if you have a festival in your world where a major part of the celebration is the throwing of rotten fruit at authority figures that's a really fun way for your players to engage with a settlement without having it be a combat holidays almost always break up the flow of a game and give your players a little bit of breathing space and downtime to explore things a little bit more and who knows what kind of future plot hooks that you might come across because of that chance to relax and explore the world a little bit. And the final reason you might want to use holidays and celebrations is because it's a really organic way of introducing world lore to your players. For example, if you have a holiday dedicated to a martyr, well, you could just tell the players outright what the holiday is, who it's dedicated to, and all the details. Or the players could come across an elder in the village who's telling the local children the tale. You're still delivering the same information, but it's an in-world delivery that makes sense because of the surrounding context. And it doesn't feel like so much of an exposition dump, rather that your players have stumbled across this information and they're learning it themselves. So you're convinced you've picked up your ceremonial goat and you're heading for the slaughter, but how do you get started? Well, the best place to start is probably with the seasons. The changing of the seasons is recognised by almost every culture on Earth. Whether it's a joyous dance around the pole to mark the start of summer, or whether the people gather together to ward off the cold and the dark at the start of winter, marking the changing of the seasons is a really common and a really accessible way to introduce your players into holidays and celebrations in your setting. Of course, if you are going to use holidays and celebrations, that means you are going to need a calendar. I've talked at length before about why I think it's really important to use a calendar in your game and how it can improve your game you can find that video up here but a calendar is going to be essential for you to be able to track the passage of time in relation to your holidays but once you've got a calendar you can mark the seasons and start with your holidays I recommend starting off with at least two one towards the end of summer to mark the harvest, food stocks will be high then and it's a great time for a feast and a celebration. And then one around the start of winter, that's when people will come together to huddle against the dark. From here you can go through, add spring and fall based holidays, add things for the solstice and the equinox and start building out your calendar based on the changing of the seasons. After the seasonal holiday, the most common type is going to be the religious holiday. This is a little more work because it requires that you draw inspiration from a pantheon, either a pre-published one or your own homebrew pantheon. To begin with, look at your pantheon and choose a god associated with nature, love and death. These are three core things that you can build really easily around for celebrations. A celebration for a nature deity might involve the planting of flora to celebrate nature's beauty, whereas a celebration of a god of love might be similar to a modern day Valentine's Day. A holiday dedicated to the dead could go a few different ways. You could have a sombre reflection with candles and really mournful music where you remember those that you have lost. Or you could have something more like the Day of the Dead celebration where it's like a giant party and people 
go in fancy dress or paint themselves up like skeletons or ghouls in a celebration of the lives led before death. If your setting is pluralistic and has multiple gods, this is really easy to do. You can just go down the list, pick gods associated with different things and create celebrations around them. But if your setting is more monotheistic, it can be a little bit more difficult, but it's easy enough to work with. Instead of focusing on multiple celebrations and holidays related to gods, you can instead focus on their saints. This is how a lot of real world religions work. There are days of celebration dedicated to saints or similar in plenty of different real world religions. If your setting is more atheist and you don't actually have gods, well, you can lean more into either the seasonal celebrations or more into our next category, which is historical celebration. Historical holidays celebrate a well-known event in history. These holidays mark something that categorically happened. They're not based on legend or folklore. They are based on real world events, maybe even some that people still remember. And however they manifest in the present, they always start as a way to mark a particular event in history. For example, a celebration to mark the passage of a well-beloved king might manifest as a day of tournaments and of contests to mark the strength of that well-loved king. Or conversely, the people might burn effigies of a slain tyrant, both as a remembrance of the damage that that tyrant did, but also as a warning to current and future political leaders that this is what happens if you step against the people. And that's what I really like about historic celebration is you can add quite a lot of subtext there depending on how deep that you want to go. You can use these days to just mark a particular event or you can tie a sort of morality to them and have them be a lesson for people. Not the historic celebration usually marks something that affected a great number of people. For example, you might have a week-long fast in remembrance of a great famine that came years ago and killed a lot of people. So now the people of the modern day, they spend a week fasting as a way to remember those that weren't so fortunate. But this also has a really practical side effect because fasting for a week means that you're not using up the food stores for that week and it makes your food stores stretch that bit longer over the winter period or in the spring, running up to the harvest. Historic festivals by and large are usually organised by governments of some sort rather than religious groups. And you can use this to tell your players something about the leadership in an area. If a local lord for example decrees that the fast should be a month instead of a week, that could mean that they're using it as a cover to hide the fact that there's a food shortage and they're using this as a way to get people to conserve that bit extra leading up to the harvest. Or you could have a king announce a new holiday in their own name, a clear indication that this king is egotistical and could even be power mad. And finally we have local holidays. These are events that are specifically practiced in a smaller area and they can be a really great way of delivering some local information to your players in a really organic way. A lot of the information surrounding a national holiday would probably be known by the player characters anyway, but local holidays they might not know anything about. So it's a really good way for you to deliver the information in game to the characters and have the players learn along with them. If you if you don't use holidays in your games I strongly recommend it because it can add so many layers to your games. It can give your players something to do in the downtime, it can give them new plot hooks and it's a way for you to deliver world information to your players in a really organic way. Now that we've talked about some of the different types of holidays and celebrations that you might make, I want to talk about some that I have made for my campaign setting of Ashk. First off, we have the Amet Festival. Now, the Amet Festival is a springtime holiday. It is a day of celebration and feasting, followed by 60 days of daily fasting, where you can only eat during the night. Now, this serves a really practical purpose because it allows the people to consume the food that is about to spoil and then conserve their food stores for 60 days leading up to the summer and up to the harvest. 
Much of Ashk is a desert and after the winter this 60 day fast is essential for making sure that the food stores don't run dry and there isn't a famine. It is typically a sign of great wealth if someone is able to go and eat normally during those 60 days. If someone is able to eat during the day, that typically means that their food stores are so stocked that they don't need to worry about conserving their food. Another less conventional celebration in Ashk is the Feast of St. Marcella. Legend tells that long ago, Queen Marcella led her people away from great strife and over through the mountains. As winter set in, food ran low and the group faced death. To ensure the survival of her people, Queen Marcella gave herself as a sacrifice to be consumed by the group so that they could survive the winter and make it through the other side of the mountain pass. When her survivors reached civilization, Marcella was canonized in the church of Koros, the goddess of death and decay. Each year, the grave priests of the City of the Dead, Mahit, choose 13 families who must nominate a female family member to take part in this celebration. One of these 13 will become the Queen of the Feast, a role that involves five days of gluttonous overeating and pampering from the other members of the 13. And then at the end of the five days, the Queen of the Feast is sacrificed, becoming the reincarnation of Queen Marcella and being sacrificed to the congregation to be consumed to see them through the winter. While to outsiders this feast would seem completely barbaric, the worshippers of Koros consider it to be an incredible honour and it's not uncommon for mothers and daughters to have screaming matches over who should be nominated to become Queen of the Feast because it is such a high privilege. And finally today I want to point you to my Dungeon Masters Bible where I have added a blank template for holidays that you can go and fill in. If you're not familiar with it, I've done a video talking about my DMs Bible in OneNote and in that notebook there is a huge amount of information and templates for you to be able to set up your world and run your game using OneNote so I highly encourage that you check it out. There'll be a link down in the description below for you to get my DMs Bible and there are instructions inside the notebook on using everything that's included. That's all for this week folks. I hope that you found it useful and it gave you some inspiration on how to use holidays and celebrations in your own game. If you've incorporated holidays or celebrations into your game I'd love to hear about them in the comments below and if you're new here welcome. I make new RPG tabletop and world building content every single week so you should hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so you never miss a video but until next time happy gaming if you're new here and like what you see make sure to hit the subscribe button i release new rpg related content every single week and if you enjoy what i do here consider supporting me on patreon you get access to behind the scenes video exclusive content and a whole bunch more and if you want to keep watching i've got a couple of videos over there that you might enjoy and until next time happy gaming